counter surveillance. Who I am. So our appointment, quote unquote, was for two o'clock at the Tranquil Buzz. It was kind of a community meeting put together by the Crooked Forest Institute. CrookedForestInstitute.org And it was really good. I'll tell you more later. The name of the place that we're staying is the Lulu. It used to be a Motel 6. I stayed here when it was. But now they've fixed it up trying to be a little more chic. This is kind of amusing. It's like with the uh, coffee shops that sell their baristas art. This is art by the motel workers. It doesn't appear to have a title, but I suggest we call it House Paint Dripped on Cardboard <laughs> because that's what it is. We were paying about $80 a night, which would be $2,400 a month. That seems a little obscene. We're thinking about other things. Right next to the Lulu, There's a different kind of opportunity. And it's one that, after a fashion, we will take advantage of. Not some $150,000 Cadillac, but that's where the TARP project comes in and other little ideas like that. The conversion of a cargo trailer, and so on. Concrete and rebar steps leading to land which is vacant. That's a little more along the lines of what we have in mind. There are a few things for me that say, coming home, like that particular sign.
Yesterday we were in the tranquil buzz for some hours. And I love the tranquil buzz. It's good people. But the javelina still has a bit of an edge in my heart. just to edit you out. a highly speculative reason to be checking in at the Murray. We're not staying there this time. Lulu was cheaper. That's really what I was talking about the other day about what Springerville is missing. So, in our continuing quest for affordable housing, the Murray Hotel is opening up their top floor for the purpose of apartments and they start at eight hundred dollars a month that's only for 200 square feet but it does include utilities for a two bedroom suite, it's more like 1400. I do know <clears throat> from looking six months ago that the Drifter, which uh, is a motel that is about as appealing as the, it sounds, was going for $750 a month. Um, $50 as a premium to stay downtown at the Murray? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that would be the better option. <laughs> so it is true that $800 a month at the Murray is a good deal. However, I have something a little more economical in mind. I'm sitting in the shade of my very own tree. I'm looking at land that's already bought and paid for. This is about $10 a month in property taxes. Of course, it doesn't have a roof yet. That's what we're going to be working on next. This is my place, even more than the house in Holbrook. It's mine. 
that one still has a mortgage. This one is paid for. But the trick is going to be the roof. So right next door, there is a, another lot. And we don't quite outright own this one yet, but we will soon. It's about halfway paid for. There's a guy who's working on a roof already. Next lot over. He went the rehab and old trailer route. But we've got the downhill lots with the theoretically unobstructable view. We'll probably end up blocking off his just a little. Anyway, we came down here on this particular weekend not to gaze covetously on what we already have, but to think about improving it. The seminar at the Tranquil Buzz that we did yesterday, we thought it was going to be a practical guide to Adobe's. It turned out to be more of a socioeconomic and political thing about affordable housing. Adobe's included. And that was all right. We met a lot of interesting people, had some interesting conversations, and got the chance to sit down here in the shade of our own tree and dream a little bit. Dreaming's all well and good. Starting tomorrow, we're going to start getting a little more practical. We're going to continue our drive on over to a place called Timberon, also in New Mexico. And we are going to visit an arched cabin. One of these days, I believe, there's a high probability that there will be an arched cabin sitting right where you're looking. Quite possibly another one right there. As for the adobe part, well, these arched cabins don't come with end caps, doors, windows, on the ends of the arched structure. So maybe we use adobe for that. It's a good dream. Thistle plant. Among others. When we were first buying the place, right about here where this uh, flower is blooming, we saw a whole family of little quail. Because things are a little bit more built up around here now, I'm uh, worried that we don't have them anymore. Them quail. But if we build in a nice, bright, sustainable way, hello, Big B. Maybe they'll come back. Dry old stalk of mullein. That's a holy sign. So, today what we're kind of talking about is where the houses will go. 
And we are kind of thinking that the first thing forward might be a circular driveway that goes from over there to over here and, you know, makes it real easy for your daily drivers to get in and out. In addition, uh, there may be driveways that, you know, run along the lot lines uh, for stowing things like trailers. But here where it's already flat is roughly speaking where the front porch and the house itself will go. Which should leave plenty of room for a back porch, a garden, and some nice terrace decking. I have some ideas about what I want to do with that so that in addition to an almost conventional home right there we've got a living outdoors situation as well that runs from the shade of that beautiful tree along the back here amplifying the already nice view. So there you are. I think that's how we're going to solve the housing crisis. At least for ourselves. All right then. So, for lunch, we went to the Iron Mountain barbecue truck and spent $35 and it was really good. But it wasn't quite perfect from the standpoint of either her new way of eating or my new way of eating. One thing we already know is that ceviche works perfectly. And so we decided maybe what we should do is make ceviche. Now, of course, we don't have a kitchen in this little room at the Lulu, but that's what this is about. We made ourselves a travel in ceviche kit. So, we bought the stuff to make it, but we also bought the stuff to make it with. And we're going to give that a try here without a refrigerator and without a stove and without any of the things that you would normally think that you needed to make dinner. So, I'll come back when we're finished with that uh, attempt. It's dinner. Now, it is true that we spent a hundred dollars on this dinner tonight. But 30 something of it was this fancy Pyrex, Pyrex dish that comes in a uh, carrying case that is insulated. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting fed my lines. We got a cutting board and we got a knife and yeah, another knife and silverware, right. Anyway, the next time that we want to uh, bring our ceviche kit along, it will be much less expensive. Uh, we might even, you know, bring a night's fish from home, from our fancy butcher box stash. And uh, not even have to buy the fish, just buy a bunch of nice vegetables to go with it. Anyway, we're both kind of pleased with the way this worked out. And probably we'll do it again and again and again.